Hey everyone, this week we're cozying up with Jasmine Nicole. She's the co-managing partner of Dead Logic, a creative agency she started with her fiance. She also tells us about her newly launched project, The Nice Plant, an e-commerce startup offering plant and plant-based products. We chat about what it's like working with your life partner, managing multiple startups, and her tips on keeping your plant babies alive. Well, welcome to Cozying Up with the Clear Cut, where we get up close and personal with women that inspire us. Today, we are with Jasmine Nicole. She is the co-founder of her creative agency, Dead Logic, where she is a brand architect, helping brands build community and transform into successful businesses. She most recently launched The Nice Plant, an e-commerce startup offering plant and plant-based products. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to speak with you today. Yeah, so let's just get right into it. I'm so curious. You have so many things going on and you're a serial entrepreneur. Can you talk a little bit about your background and upbringing and like what was your journey and path that influenced you to start these ventures? Yeah, definitely. So I'm originally from Cleveland and I ended up at Ohio State um, for undergraduate studies never really had a strong draw to becoming an entrepreneur necessarily, but I was very uh, creative just by nature. So I loved doing events. I loved, I guess, arts and crafts um, to some degree. And I think uh, my experience during college doing events kind of just pulled me um, toward continuing that after college. Uh, I got to the point where I just really enjoyed every single process of production. Um, And it just inspired me to kind of venture off and do my own thing. And from there, I just got creative with it. So I would, I would, um, you know, literally kind of pull all these ideas together. And I decided to go out on my own, start my own company, start working with clients and, um, you know, just kind of moved to the rhythm of my own beat. Uh, from there, I started working with my now fiance and we own and operate our creative agency doing that, you know, for all types of clients from the music industry to nonprofit sector. And it just, it's really a vessel to, um, you know, stay creative and kind of uh, carve out my own path, if you will. Awesome. So how did, you know, you take that um, creative agency and start, you know, the nice plant? So during uh, 2020, when when everything seemed to just really halt, right? Events were canceled left and right. A lot of our clients lost their marketing budgets instantly. Um, So I had a little bit more time to kind of, um, you know, ponder on what a new venture would look like uh, and how we could bring that to life. Prior to the pandemic, I didn't have an, an, a spare inch of time. Like it just wasn't a thing. So it really gave us a second to, to consider uh, launching a company that was rooted in something that I just absolutely love and have that thing, that, you know, business operating 24 hours a day versus um, our other ventures that, you know, we work with clients and, and kind of manage projects and it's extremely fun, but you know, we're really passionate about building wealth and building multiple streams of uh, income. And so that was the thought. It was like, whoa, let's take this time and figure out how, you know, what would that be? And it ended up being the nice plan. It ended up being curated boxes that are shipped to your doorstep. Um, I love plants. I have plants all over my home and it just made, it made perfect sense. So we were able to you know, lean into our existing skill set and bring the whole thing to life, you know, ourselves from the branding to the infrastructure, to the products, to our marketing efforts, to launching. Wow. That is so crazy. So the pandemic really um, launched the nice plan. How do you see this? You know, how do you see yourself balancing both businesses and both ventures as the world opens up a little bit? 
Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a great question. It's something that, you know, we thought about early on, but at the same time, these aren't even our only two ventures. You know, we're, we're actively building, um, just different entities and working on different projects. So it's just being intentional, making sure that we have a strong team, um, which we are building right now to sustain and grow and, you know, working with the right partners, um, to just stay aligned. You know, we, the nice plant really is rooted in, um, plants simplifying gift, gifting, excuse me, is rooted in plants simplifying gifting and um, also self care. So it's something that we're really mindful of just having multiple companies working together, um, you know, all the things. But I think it also, I, the pandemic gave us a different pace that we really enjoyed. So I think we're a bit more mindful with our time now as well. So it was definitely a blessing in the midst of. Um, what was a really, really rough year. Yeah, definitely. And I know I have never been someone that had a green thumb and killed like every plant I ever had. But now we just moved into this new apartment with a little outdoor space and I've been potting and planting all weekend that takes up like all my spare time. And I'm really finding it very therapeutic and seeing things like bloom and grow. It's so rewarding. I completely, completely relate. And even with the initial part, I used to kill plants. I literally used to kill plants all the time. It just, I wasn't attentive to them in a way that like, I just had no knowledge. And then I didn't even take the first step to figure out like what I was doing wrong. And that was a huge reason, you know, my journey, just going from killing plants to literally over 40 plants in my home I wanted that for other people because it's not impossible. And um, the point you made about, you know, plant care being therapeutic, that that was exactly um, how I felt about having plants in my space and what they do for me. Like being able to just take a beat, water my plants, notice that they're growing, like seeing blooms, seeing sprouts, that it's, it really is therapeutic. And I love that, you know, you're in this new space and you're, you've kind of added that to your routine. That is amazing. When did you start, you know, transitioning from being like a plant killer to someone who has 40 plants in their house and they're thriving? Um, honestly, I think it was once I moved um, to LA and I got my little studio apartment. It was just, I love that place. Um, the flower district and really a lot of places in LA sell a lot of plants. And I just started acquiring, you know, one by one, I would get them. And because I was getting like, you know, two, three, now four, now five plants, I would just look up information, just kind of see like, oh, don't water that one. Oh, this one, you know, water this one a little bit more. And from there, I just, I pay just a little bit more attention to them. Um, and I think that was just the transition. Prior to that, you know, I would maybe pick up a plant at like Lowe's or something and then you know, nothing, nothing great would happen from there. But I think once I looked at um, the plants as like, in addition to my space, because I had that little studio, it was so quaint, but this was like a little accent piece. And I wanted to, you know, add more of that. I think that was the transition. I'm not sure. <laughs> So is the nice plant um, geared to like new plant parents who might not have experience with, you know, gardening or planting? Absolutely. I love that. There are so many people, they reach out, they give us feedback, like as first time plant owners, it is amazing. And we definitely want people to you know, kind of just jump in. You do not have to be an expert to have a plant. It's just not, you, you really don't. And we provide plant care instructions that come with the plant. So it just makes it really seamless. But also people um, send these boxes, I would say most frequently as gifts. They're literally the perfect gift because whether that person has a plant, has ever owned a plant, um, maybe is a plant killer, the gift it, you know, it's all inclusive. You get the plant, you get the instructions, you get some um, self-care uh, or mindful routine um, suggestions, other natural products. Like it really makes the perfect gift. And 
it doesn't matter the skill level of the recipient. So we just simplify all of that. And, you know, it's kind of like a stress-free gift for anybody. So I love the idea that people who really aren't great at plants or don't think that they can be, get these boxes and they're like, wow, this is literally perfect. Yeah. And um, you're recently engaged, right? Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yes. Such an exciting time. Um, and you're engaged to your co-founder. Um, I'm familiar with that. I'm married to my co-founder. Tell me a little bit about, you know, how you guys balance like work and life and romantic life. How do you do it? Because people always ask me that. I definitely get that question a lot. Um, and I love to kind of share our experience because you do often like people have this idea that it just it's so incredibly hard or nearly impossible and just overly stressful. And for us, I think it's just been a fun journey. We've been together and working together for five years. Like it was very much um, a transition and a learning curve. You know, you, you're learning this person as a partner and then you're learning this person in the business space and, and how I operate, you know, in the business space as an individual is different from how I operate with my girlfriends or with, you know, my really close, um, family or just different, different relationships. So for all of that to happen at the same time was certainly, um, you know, it's, it was really a transition. We learned our communication styles. We learned our communication needs. We learned how we function best in business. Um, and then there are certainly projects where he's taking the lead and I am the supporting role. And then there are projects where I am, you know, holding the reins and he's in the supporting role. And so those dynamics are very different, but it's just been a really fun experience. Honestly, I don't see <laughs> how it will work any other way for me, uh, in my life. I, I absolutely love it's one of my favorite things that we get to literally do life and do business together um so i always encourage people who ask me they're like how do you do it like how like how do you balance that um with kind of that disbelief energy and i'm like actually it just takes a little bit of intention you just spend a little time talking about these things being very transparent you know with what you need and how how you expect or want things to function um so yeah, Andre and I, I we're, it's such a, you know, we're such in sync um, energies in work and business that it's just one of my favorite things. Yeah, I can't imagine having multiple companies and doing that, but it is, I find it like really romantic to be able to like build a business, build a life. Like I I'm, I always thought I was just like really needy. So I needed a lot of attention all the time. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't just work all day and then get home and like, be like, oh yeah, work was good. And that that's it. So I don't know. I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. I, I totally get that too. It would be weird for me. <laughs> So since you guys are always together, like working together, living together, was how did he surprise? Was it a surprise when you got engaged? Like, tell me about um, that moment or that day. Yes. So <laughs> it was such a surprise. And I could have sworn I was going to see it coming. You could not have told me <laughs> that, that he was going to get me. But um, it was actually during during um, the pandemic in May. And, you know, we had been in the house for weeks. We were kind of like a little antsy. And we drove up um, to the mountains um, not too far from L.A. And just had a beautiful couple of days, just the two of us in like a uh, you know, secluded Airbnb. It was a really fun time and I was not expecting it at all. I was just happy to not be <laughs> in the in house. The house. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was, I was happy to just be outside of the house and yeah, on, on our way out, we were actually going to head back and drive back to LA. He just got me, he got our cameras out. He fooled me, asked me to take a nice photo <laughs> in front of the mountains, which were gorgeous. And I just turn around and he <laughs> down on one knee. And it was, it was the most romantic, like special moment and gesture and 
surprise. I, I'm still shocked that he, I was surprised, but it was literally perfect. Um, yeah, in that ring, he, he got me. <laughs> <laughs> so it was all him. It was all him. Wow. That's impressive. <laughs> it is. It really is. I mean, it takes, I think people kind of don't think about like, what it takes to kind of bring that all, all together. And if you're, you know, you, you're nervous, you're excited, work. you're, you're, yeah. yeah, it's a lot of work. So what advice would you give to, you know, someone who might be thinking about going into business with their partner, maybe someone who's not necessarily even married to their partner yet? Like, do you have any like tips or advice to share? Absolutely. Um, I think the biggest piece of advice is to be extremely transparent and, what I mean by that is specifically about what you need and what you want as it relates to that balance. Like I encourage you to do it. And some people say it's not for everyone, but I think if you're invested in yourselves and building multiple streams of income, there's no reason that you shouldn't like do some sort of business. I mean, building a life with someone is a business at the end of the day. So you know, do not be discouraged, but definitely be upfront, be, be, uh, very transparent in what you feel your needs are. And I think that was a huge turning point, um, in mine and Andre's relationship was having those conversations that really just uncover, you know, the communication styles, the way that you guys, um, communicate, because it's going to be such a joyful. It's not going to be pleasant. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. Like it's not just going to be bare minimum. Okay. It's going to be incredible as long as you guys are on the same page and you can only be on the same page when you know what each other need. So I think that would be my, my bit of advice. I agree. Communication is just like everything. Completely. Hey everyone, Olivia here. Hope you're enjoying our episode. Our clear cut collection features fine jewelry pieces inspired and designed with you in mind. Our collection is ever changing and each piece is handmade and made to order here in New York City. Don't forget to check it out and use the code COZY, C-O-Z-Y for free shipping on any purchase. What, um, what was one of your biggest challenges or what is the biggest challenge you faced? Like when you were founding these ventures? Oh man, let me, um, so I think with the nice plant, the, the challenge really, I mean, launching a company during a pandemic <laughs> yes. is a little challenging in itself, but you know, just managing, um, timelines a lot of things were disrupted um you know on the business side with with the pandemic from shipping and vendors um kind of being backed up from you know packing supplies and different things like that that you really have to kind of foresee and and really think beyond the immediate um future so everything else for us we're so passionate about it that um we're like creative solution driven and it was it didn't feel like a crazy challenge. I think some of the logistics just really, you know, kind of uh, <laughs> wanted to be a hurdle, but we definitely um, we definitely got over them um, in a in a good pace, if you will. And then with our creative agency and not having enough time, I mean, it's exciting to, you know, work with clients and do your own thing. And, um, when you are a small, small team, which we are, uh, it could be a, a bit much, you know, to kind of take things on and then kind of feel a little bit overwhelmed. But I think that's the difference between a lot of entrepreneurs. When you have the tenacity to kind of just stick it out, it's not forever. You're not going to work that hard forever. And in the beginning, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of hours. There's a lot of, um, sacrifice. And I mean, I, I would just call that the biggest challenge, really just being, being open to the idea of sacrificing things because you're, you're putting so much time into building 
building this business, but you, you know, when you're committed to it and you, you know, it's going to, it's going to pay off and it's going to work out when you're really, really dedicated to it. So definitely worth it. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. And how has your experience as a female founder, a female founder of color, like changed your entrepreneurial journey or how has it influenced your entrepreneurial journey? Oh man. So yeah, being a black woman, uh, it, you know, it has its own set of challenges. Um, I think one of the things early on, I, I really had to find my voice and I had to find my confidence to almost demand um, space. And that was challenging because even with my partner, being a woman has its own set of challenges that he didn't really have the visibility into um, at the time. So so it was difficult, you know, being frustrated when people would over talk you or not take you seriously um, in client meetings where they would you know, give him a bit more respect, a bit more uh, space to really talk and and throw ideas and to make decisions. Um, but yeah, I think I think being a woman of color, being a black woman, um, just focused on building building companies, hiring strong people, and working with really high quality um, partners and clients was challenging. Just because um, I haven't, I didn't have that many people that I saw doing it. Um, I think when I first ventured out on my own, I, it was like, um, you know, I told myself that it was, you know, it was possible and that I can do this thing. I think I just was built that way. Um, from a young age, I, I just have always had that sense of confidence, but in the industry of like being your own boss and, uh, working independently of like a parent agency or something like that. I didn't know people doing it. I didn't know how it was going to be done. And I, I felt some roadblocks, um, when trying to set meetings or, or different things. And it wasn't even a few years in, like, it wasn't like I didn't have a roster of extremely successful events and clientele, but I had to find my voice. I had to literally talk about it because when we don't talk about it, it kind of settles under the, you know, in the background and it can be that, um, subconscious, uh, lack of confidence that gets in the way. So I think talking about it allowed me to really pinpoint and say, okay, great. Now here's what I'm going to do to make sure the next time I'm in the middle of a conversation and I feel, you know, it just, I had to really find my voice and confidence and, Sometimes your delivery, even when you're direct as a black woman, it can, you know, just be misconstrued where other people would not um, get that same reaction if they said that exact same thing the same way. So that was tough. I would say that is still tough, but I've I've got my footing. I feel it's something I still talk about because it's a real challenge. Present tense, but being able to pinpoint it, being able to talk about it. Um, and it's one of the reasons I'm super, super passionate about mentoring and bringing interns on around us so they can see, so they can really interact with someone managing companies in meetings, building from scratch. Um, it's, it's like that, uh, permission it's, 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 visibility. It just matters. And it really can boost someone who's really early on in their, in their professional career to say, wow, oh, she's 30. Like she's been, okay. 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 Great. I can do this, you know, or I deserve space. I can make space. There's room for me despite, um, you know, the resistance that you will find as a woman that you will find as a black woman, that you will find as a woman of color, like you will meet resistance. And it's really just a matter of how the tools that you put in your toolkit, the the things, the resources that you can pull out of your bag in those moments, that can really help. Yeah. And I think it's so important, you know, for just young women to see some sort of representation that gives them the hope that they're like, okay, like it's not impossible there. I can do what she's doing, you know? I agree. I agree. It matters so much. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so what do you see yourself like? What are some of your personal and professional goals in the next five, 10 years? Like what can we hope to see from you? Yeah, um, definitely the nice plant just booming. Okay, retail stores, products, um, tons of corporate partnerships. Um, we've, I mean, even within the, we're not even at our first calendar year and we have been working with some incredible um, corporations, big companies that are gifting their teams across the country. They're gifting their clients um, and just really, you know, trying to stay in tune with their team. So I, I am excited about tapping into even more corporate gifting uh, relationships with the nice plant and really just being able to grow a team of young, creative, um, you know, talented young people uh, with our agency. You know, we just want to keep doing fun experiences. We work and produce um, campaigns and events, activations and all of that. And I'm excited to also grow that team and be able to, um, you know, make some make, make some real noise, uh, even in the nonprofit sector um, as the, the go to agency. Um, but yeah, overall, honestly, just building these companies, multiple streams of income, um, and, and a strong team, uh, around us to, to get to that vision five to 10 years. I, it's going to be crazy. It's going to look really different. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, <laughs> even in one look, year, things change so much. Plant. That was a crazy, <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. Time just goes, but I'm excited. I'm really excited. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, as we're getting out of this crazy year and like the pandemic, there's just going to be so many new opportunities and things that we don't even know. <laughs> I mean, literally in six months, I could have a completely new thing. <laughs> the world is just changing, you know, and I so fast. And I'm, it's so fast. And, and, you know, I'm grateful that we're in a space where we can innovate and, and do things to kind of keep up with that evolution that we're seeing in real time um so yeah that's pretty fun <laughs> amazing so tell everyone you know where they can shop follow all of that good stuff definitely so you can find the nice plant online and anywhere you socialize digitally at the nice plant um our website is the nice plant.com and you can follow me online as well uh, my instagram is really J S M N, um, really Jasmine. And I'm also all over the internet. <laughs> so I love to connect. I love to connect with, you know, young creatives, young business people. I am an open book, literally. And I always, you know, encourage people to ask questions. I wish when I was younger, I had the, um, the courage to just say, Hey, how did you do this thing? Hey, how do I get like, where did you find this information? And it, it's really about asking. So please, please connect with me and definitely shop the nice plant uh, for anyone, for any occasion and for yourself. Amazing. Well, thanks so much for coming on today. This was so much fun. So much fun. It's so nice talking to you. I really appreciate you having me on. It was so much fun chatting with Jasmine Nicole about her journey and also her tips to keep your plants thriving. I definitely needed these tips and tricks after buying a ton of new plants for our terrace and I'm still kind of struggling to keep them alive. So TBD, let's see what happens. 